Good morning. There I am. Welcome to worship. Thank you for being here. Welcome to the folks at home. Glad that you're able to join us as well. <clears throat> we are still recovering from our, our COVID outbreak, but um, as far as I know, everybody's on the mend. So that's very good news. We're grateful for that. <clears throat> you may know that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so as in conjunction with that, the Faith Partners Group has, has invited a few people to come in and talk to us about mental health and faith. And so we welcome Ingrid DeVries and her husband, Dave. I'm glad that you are here with us this morning. Ingrid is a licensed mental health care professional, and she is also the director of campus health at Union College. So we are glad that you're here and look forward to what you have to say to us today. <clears throat> Uh, next week, we have a big celebration planned. It is the retiring of the mortgage. Uh, Pastor Megan Morrow will be here to help us celebrate from Synod. And, uh, and we're, at this point, we're still planning on having a meal. We will see. Um, if our numbers don't improve, then um, we, we may postpone it till later in the summer. Um, but what, next week, we will also be uh, bidding farewell and Godspeed to Christy Seibert and also Alex Armstrong. Um, Alex has been our bassist for, what, four years now? I think so. I was, I was thinking it was 18 is when you came. Yeah, you were young when you started. <laughs> ah, and Christy has been with us since 2005 or 6, um, some, somewhere in that neighborhood. So um, we ask that you bring cards of appreciation next week, greeting cards, 
and, uh, and we will have a, a farewell and Godspeed for them next week. On the 29th, <clears throat> Emma Grindy will be here. She is the vicar from, a former vicar, from the Lutheran Student Center. Um, she has been here learning from me, learning from us, learning with us, um, and is getting ready to go off to her first call, her, her first uh, congregation and, uh, and ordination. So she'll be here to say goodbye, and we can say goodbye to her and send, send her with our blessings. Um, and so that is not next week, but the week after. <clears throat> Um, I saw on Facebook last night that Carly Bates graduated from UNL yesterday. She got her degree in early childhood education and special ed, and she's going to be starting at Campbell in the fall. So we... It's Arnold? Okay. So that's Aunt, that's Aunt Carmen's fault, because she put Campbell. Ah, you were close. So she's going to be at Arnold in special ed. That's awesome. So we celebrate with Carly. And um, I also learned this morning that Cassie Broman is getting married this week. Next, next weekend? Yeah. So we celebrate with, with Cassie and, and the Broman family. That's really exciting news. <clears throat> um, one final thing. If you have not yet registered um, for a safe sanctuary, please let me know. Um, and so I can get a head count to Sheridan. Safe Sanctuary training is for anyone who is in leadership. So if you serve on a committee, if you serve on council, um, if you do have any interactions with the children, <clears throat> you need to go through this training. Our insurance requires it. So, and if, if not, I mean, if you're not in any of those things, but you just want to know how to help provide safe sanctuary in the congregation, you are more than welcome to come to the training. It's free. Um, the dates and the times are there in the bulletin for you. <clears throat> okay. Let's begin our worship. Please stand as you are able. <clears throat> we begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is alive. Let all the people praise him. Let all creation sing with joy. Alleluia. Trusting in the love of God to make all things new, we confess our sin to God and our neighbor. God of mercy, you command, command to, to love, love one another across all differences, differences opens us to new horizons, horizons. Yet, yet we, we often, often respond, respond with fear and judgment that hinders your goal for humanity. For humanity. Forgive, Forgive our, our sins, sins, we pray, and, and give, give us a true repentance that leads to life for all creation. creation. We pray, we pray in, in Jesus' Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. God's promises are trustworthy and true. Your sins are forgiven. Be at peace to serve the Lord, and may you always be known by your love. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And peace let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy, for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray. Church of God and for the 
O oh Lord God, you teach us that without love, our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love. We ask you to live by your spirit, we may know goodness and peace. Through your Son, Son Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated. Our first reading comes from the 11th chapter of Acts. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea, arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced and they praised God, saying, then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Now join with me reading responsively from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, Stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. Young men and women alike, old <clears throat> and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a <laughs> horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Gospel is from the 13th chapter of John. 
When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. <laughs> if God has been glorified in him, God will also, also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. <clears throat> By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. And again, I want to welcome Ingrid DeVries. Uh, we're very glad to have her here with us as she's going to talk about how her vocation and faith intersect and, um, and a little bit about what she does as a licensed mental health professional. So, Ingrid? Good morning. Thank you for inviting me to be here and worship with you this morning. Um, it's such an honor to be uh, worshiping here in this beautiful sanctuary. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> I, as a Christian and also as a mental health um, pro professional, um, have been, I have been also um, always fascinated by um, the connection, the interconnection between psychology and Christianity. And as I have been studying throughout my career, uh, the Bible, I have noticed how much similarities are there. Um, no wonder why, because as God creatures, we were created in his image. So as God experienced emotions, we also experience emotions. And so I would like to start exploring emotions as shown in the Bible, because it, the Bible has several examples of individuals who experienced emotions that impacted also their mental health. So let's start looking at God's emotions. Um, in Genesis um, when, 1 10, when um, it started sharing what, when God created the earth, um, he, at the end of every day of creation, he would state, um, it is so good, it was so good. So it implies that God was experiencing enjoyment at that moment as he looked through his creation. Also, um, although God is infinite, and of course we are not infinite, um, in, in the aspect and the context of sin, you see that God also experienced emotions that were considered negative emotions. For instance, when he learned that Lazarus, his friend, died, and he saw Mary crying because of that, um, he also cried. He experienced sadness and cried at that moment. Um, he also um, experienced a profound sadness when he was at um, Gethsemane before he died on the cross for us, he actually wanted to have this connection with the Father. You know, it's kind of a vertical connection, if you will, but also a horizontal connection because he um, invited his friends, disciples, to come and comfort them. So constantly you see um, God's emotions throughout the Bible. Another occasion um, dealing with the Israelites in all their behaviors and lack of faith at times, um, he would um, be angry at their behavior um, at times, but also full of compassion as <clears throat> he led them to the promised land. So constantly throughout the Bible, you see so many examples of God's emotions. Um, then you have, let's, let's talk about human beings. Let's talk about human beings like you and me. And so, um, come to mind, for example, Elijah, who was isolated because of his safety. He had to be <clears throat> um, isolated because of, you know, they were trying to kill him anyways. 
Um, and at some point, he joined the household of the widow and her son. Um, and together, they face um, isolation and poverty and um, physical illness as well. Some other um, individuals in the Bible, um, let's think about Job. I mean, the story of Job is amazing, and you can see how much losses he experienced. So he probably experienced grieving through the losses and deprivation and physical illness that he um, experienced throughout the book of Job, we see that. Um, David, in his Psalms, a lot of times, he talks about how he was feeling fearful for his enemies, um, experiencing loneliness at time, and grief for the loss of his son, as well, um, Moses um, he asked he was he was asked to go and speak to Pharaoh, um, but he was afraid he was afraid of doing that, and he reached out to Aaron uh, to help him with that task. So, as you can see, we all as a human being it, beings experience emotions. So, through God, through um, individuals in the Bible, <clears throat> no wonder um, sometimes. Um, we don't know sometimes what to do with our emotions, especially when they are considered negative emotions. Um, so we feel uncomfortable. Um, and the reason that we feel uncomfortable of experiencing negative emotions is because research has shown that um, the same part of the brain that um, <clears throat> has to do with the physical pain um, also is highlighted when it's activated, if you will, when we experience the emotional pain as well, emotional discomfort as well. Um, they have done some studies uh, with um, um, MRIs, and so they have discovered some of that. So we do feel emotionally sometimes uh, really drained of when we experience something that's considered negative. Um, so, and we try them to numb them. At times, we just want to push them away, at least for a moment, uh, so, so we don't have to experience that. Um, and for some of us, we have a set of coping strategies that we can tackle and, and use them right away. But for some of us, it's a little bit more difficult and challenge, and we may then um, reach out to um, unhealthy coping strategies, such as uh, drinking of alcohol or any other um, mind-altering substances. Um, and that is not helpful because um, that really impacts your ability to think clear because of the, your, brain being, your brain being cluttered with um, the alcohol or the substances. Um, you, you don't have a clear mind to really um, being able to think things through, make a better decision, and um, being able to connect with God and with others. So now you may ask, what would be an effective way to manage emotions? Um, of course, um, the first thing we want is to be aware of them. Um, and the other aspect of that is start practicing some of the effective coping strategies that you have. We all have them. And, um, Sometimes we forget about practicing them, um, but we all have them. And as a counselor, I would say that you might want to add that social connection to your toolbox. Um, because um, social connection plays such a vital role in the human health. Um, there are so many research out there that has established that social connection has that power to impact not only our emotional um, and mental health, but also our physical health. And more recent research has shown that um, understanding of the ways that social connection impacts um, our physical health in regards to cancer and heart disease, um, and also depression and addiction. There is an author and a researcher called Brenna Brow. She has wrote several books, and she has done a lot of extensive research on the area of social connection. And in an interview, she shares something that I would like to share with you this morning. She says, a deep sense of love and belonging is a desirable need to all people. 
we are biologically, connect, co cognitively, physically, and spiritually wired to love and to be loved and to belong. When those needs are not met, we don't function <clears throat> and we um, are not, we don't function as we were meant to. We break, we fall apart, we numb, we ache, we hurt others, we get sick. We are profoundly social creatures. We pride, our, pride ourselves on our ex independency, but at the root of the most of the desires is the need to belong, to be accepted and to connect with others and to be loved. So as you can see, uh, we have this natural need of connection. Um, as you spoke this morning in your program so far, um, invited God and, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you can see even God has a three in one. They have this connection between God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. It's three in one. That means that is a connection there. So how important it is the connection that we have with one another and, and with God. Um, so researchers, you know, over and over again, they have stressed the truth of the matter is that a sense of social connection is one of our fundamental human needs. Um, as Jesus reached out to his friends for comfort, as Moses reached out to his brother Aaron for help, it almost kind of gives us permission to also reach out for comfort, healing, and help. Um, at times, <clears throat> we may um, benefit to have a dialogue with someone, <clears throat> sorry, a professional, such as a pastor or a counselor or a, psychology, a psychologist, um, either in person or via telehealth, just to help us to navigate life. They might have something to say that might sparkle some ideas and some suggestions that might sparkle some healing process for you um, <clears throat> or some new ways of seeing the problem that you're facing um, or identify some health effective ways to deal with the issues and find coping strategies. Um, as a church, <clears throat> we can certainly provide that safe space for those who are looking for healing. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the, the healing happens not only vertically with God, but also horizontally with one another. And um, what a beautiful thing when the church um, are able to provide that safe space for, for healing. Um, and this morning, I would like to leave you with this message uh, found in 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. In I encourage you today um, to allow yourself to find that healing through connection with one another and with God as well. Thank you.
as you are able. We are God's people by baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. <clears throat> Loving God, thank you for this beautiful day and for all the blessings that it holds. We thank you that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, made in your image and made with beautiful and complex emotions. While these can be hard to manage sometimes, we thank you for the highs and the lows that come with life. Help us to continue to learn that emotions are not good or bad, they just are. And when our feelings seem overwhelming, lead us to find the right people or resources to help us manage them. Thank you for people like Ingrid who can walk alongside us to help us understand our feelings. In this COVID tide, many are struggling to manage feelings of depression and isolation. We ask that you would surround those who are sad and lonely this day Help them to know they are never alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for answering our prayers for rain, and thank you for sending it gently to water your parched earth. Inspire us to praise you through the beauty and the majesty of the natural world around us. Urge us to be more deliberate in the care of the world that you have made. Especially be with those who are in danger of wildfires and spring storms. Bless those who are helping with recovery for those who have been displaced. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your blessing on your church and every faithful heart that gathers in your name. Lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudices or desires as the church cares for one another. Open us to perceive your gifts in those that we least expect. Use us to be your hands and feet in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the nations of the world with a desire for unity and peace. Comfort those who suffer this day, especially our siblings in Ukraine, Sudan, and other places of national conflict, and bring an end to the injustice of war. Protect the innocents who are always the unintentional casualties of such times. Melt the stubborn and prideful hearts of those in power and help move them toward peace and a cessation of violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten to dwell among those who are in pain or distress, especially those we name before you now. <clears throat> Alleviate their suffering, whether it is in body, mind, or spirit. As Christ enters our deepest suffering, remain with those experiencing despair and great need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Place holy love at the center of all our relationships and communities. By your love, heal us, convict us, and renew us. Bring an end to racism in our churches and communities. Let everyone know, by your, good, let everyone know your goodness by the love that we show one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us a place in the diverse company of your beloved saints. Teach us the value of each person's identity and bless us with a shared identity as your children, kindred of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting that you hear us and will answer us according to your great plans for us. We lift these prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. Amen. Please stand as you are able.
right before he died, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses and forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is God's table and everyone is welcome here. So come, you who have great faith and you who wish you had more. Come, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time. Come, you who have tried to follow and you who have fallen short. Come, not because I invite you, but because God desires to meet you here. And for those who are celebrating at home, please know that you are part of this table and part of this meal. This is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The congregation may be seated.
you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ give us strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Amen. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. 
Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Again, we thank Ingrid for being here with us today and sharing such beautiful words. Thank you so much. She's going to be available after worship as we conclude. Um, and she's also going to hop on Zoom. So if folks at home, if you have questions, feel free to type those into the chat box and we'll see if we can get those answered for you. We are called to love one another because Jesus loves us. Help, Help us to, to love, love one, one another. another. We are called to love the stranger, those in need, those with whom we disagree. In other words, everyone. Help us, us to, to love, love one, one another, another, even those who differ from us. Go in peace. Learn to love as Christ loved us. Christ, Christ is, is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We, we are Easter people who are, who are reaching out, out sharing, sharing grace. Thanks be to God. Well, he picked me up, he turned me around, he set my feet on higher ground. Glory, hallelujah, jubilee. He gives me peace, he gives me joy. dark as night, the light I could not see. Since he came to me, I'm singing such a melody as ring. Glory, hallelujah, jubilee. When he picked me up, he turned me around. He sent my feet on higher ground. Glory, hallelujah, jubilee. When he picked me up, he turned me around. He sent
walk is like the light I could not see. Since he came to me, I'm singing such a melody. It's ring, glory, hallelujah, jubilee. When he picked me up, he turned me round. He sent my 